Hello everyone, uh, this next game was played in 1973, it was the interzonal tournament in Petropolis, Brazil, and the top 3 contenders of this tournament would qualify to play in the candidates tournament. And in this game David Bronstein is playing uh, against uh, Lyubomir Lyubojevic, and Lyubomir Lyubojevic was the number 3 player in the world uh, at the time this game was played. And the reason I decided to show you this game is that, well, uh, Bronstein was extremely cheeky this game. And he decided to let uh, Ljubovic play a line in the Alakain's defense uh, in which he is famous. Uh, Ljubovic was considered to be the strongest player in the world in this line of the Alakain defense. And one other reason I decided to show you this game, uh, back in 2010, uh, my, my chess team and myself, we were playing the Croatian team championship and, uh, well, a friend of mine was playing against a strong international master. He had the black pieces. And after the game, uh, the international master won the game, and he told him that, uh, well, that Alakine defense you chose to play uh, isn't very popular ever since that game uh, Bronstein vs. Ljubojevic in 1973. And my friend never saw this game, actually, and, well, you should definitely see this game uh, if you're an Alakine's defense player, so something like this doesn't happen to you. So, let's see the game. David Bronstein is white and Ljubomir Ljubojevic is black. And we have e4 by Bronstein. We have knight to f6, the Alakine defense, uh, e5, knight to d5, d4, we have d6, now c4, kicking the knight. And this c4 move, this is, uh, this is what uh, Ljubovic was famous for playing uh, with the black pieces. So he goes knight to b6, and Bronstein plays f4, the four pawns attack of the Alakine's defense. Uh, we have d captures on e5, f captures on e5, and now Ljubovic plays c5. And we have d5 by Bronstein. This is a kind of advancing the pawns a bit too much, but, uh, well, Bronstein decided to do it. So, uh, Ljubovic plays e6. We have knight to c3, now e captures on d5, c captures on d5, and now c4. And now this c4 pawn is very nicely defended by the knight on b6, and it's kind of preventing this bishop from developing the light squared bishop. So we have knight to f3, we have bishop to g4, attacking the knight, and now uh, Bronstein plays queen to d4. Uh, with this move, queen to d4, he is attacking this uh, c4 pawn twice, and also the bishop on g4. So, uh, Ljubovic captures the knight, bishop captures on f3. We have g captures on f3, and now bishop to b4. And uh, uh, Bronstein captures, uh, bishop captures on c4. Uh, uh, Ljubovic castles, we have a rook to g1. And this rook to g1 move is the idea uh, that uh, Bronstein decided to use this game. Uh, you'll see why. Uh, so, Ljubovic plays g6, just preventing any e6 ideas. We have uh, bishop to g5, uh, we have queen to c7, and this is Bronstein's idea. By playing bishop g5, he allows queen to c7, and this queen to c7 move is now attacking this bishop on c4 twice. And uh, black would really love to exchange this bishop. Uh, but uh, an even greater threat, if the bishop is defended or moved, uh, it's bishop to c5, pinning the queen and the rook. Uh, but exactly this is uh, Bronstein's idea. He plays bishop to b3, and he invites uh, Ljubovic to play bishop to c5. So we have bishop to c5 by Ljubovic, and now queen to f4. So uh, Ljubovic, of course, captures the rook, and now Bronstein plays d6, attacking the queen. Uh, so we have queen to c8, and now king to e2. Uh, well... Bronstein wanted to bring the rook into the game, of course, but he didn't want to do a queenside castle because this would put the king on c1 in line of in line of Ljubovic's queen. So he decided to play, uh, play a move like king e2. And, well, uh, Ljubovic had to find a solution over the board for this move, and, uh, well, black is actually better here. Uh, if Ljubovic uh, had found this queen to c5 move, then he, he, he would be much better in this game and probably he probably wouldn't lose this. Uh, but he played bishop to c5, and uh, Bronstein immediately played knight to e4. Uh, so we have uh, knight to d7, and now rook to c1, uh, pinning that bishop. So we have uh, queen to c6, and now Bronstein has another great idea. He plays rook captures on c5. And uh, by eliminating this bishop, uh, black's control of the dark squares uh, near the king is completely shattered. So all the dark squares now belong to, to Bronstein. He plays uh, knight captures on c5, and we have knight to f6 check. So king to h8, and now queen to h4, threatening checkmate on h7. Uh, we have queen to b5 check, 
and now uh, Bronstein plays king to e3, a very nice move, uh, preventing black from, from doing any more checks. Uh, uh, Ljubovic plays uh, h5, and here Bronstein has to continue the attack, so he just plays knight captures uh, on h5. And the knight can't be captured because it's instant checkmate, uh, and uh, well... Uh, uh, Ljubovic has to find, uh, find a move, and there really isn't any move to play. Uh, you might think that the white king is vulnerable here, here because these knights are very close and the queen is here. And, uh, well, you do have this check on d3, but let's see what happens if queen to d3 is played. If queen to d3, then simply king to f2, you get knight to e4 check, because, well, there aren't any more checks in the position. So you'd, you'd have to play something like knight e4, sacrifice a knight, and after f captures an e4, and uh, queen to d4 check, king to g2, queen captures some b2 check, and king to h3, and there are no more checks, and the knight to f6 check with mate is coming. So... After knight to h5, uh, Ljubovic is pretty much forced to play queen captures on b3 with check. Uh, so we have a captures on b3 and now knight to d5 check. And uh, Bronstein uh, attacks with his king, he plays king to d4. And uh, one of the knights is definitely gonna be captured, so he uh, he plays knight to e6 check, bringing the key king deeper. Uh, Bronstein captures, king captures on d5, and now knight captures on g5. And uh, Bronstein doesn't capture the knight, first he plays a knight to f6, check with uh, from the queen, and the knight can't cover up because the queen can capture it. So we have uh, king to g7, and now queen captures on g5. And now, uh, well, uh, Bronstein is a lot better here, but Ljubovic tried a couple of more moves. He tried a rook to d8, we have e6, f captures on e6, king captures on e6, uh, the king is uh, coming to help with the attack. We have rook to f8 d7 and now a5 uh, try, uh, Ljubovic tries to go for the king uh, using a6 and here uh, Bronstein decides uh, to give up his queen but this is all over so we have rook to a6 check king to the, king to e5 and now rook to f5 we're pinning the king and queen uh, so we have queen captures uh, pawn captures and now Bronstein uh, promotes his pawn to a queen on d8 we have uh, f captures on g4 uh, queen to d7 check, king to h6, now grabbing the pawn on b7, we have rook to, rook to g6, and now f4, and in this position, well, Ljubovic resigned, and there was no more hope for him to, to win the interzonal or even to qualify in the top three uh, places uh, to go to the candidates. And uh, I think it was, yeah, Enrique making uh, won this tournament with F and Geller to follow and uh, so on. So... Definitely a beautiful game by Bronstein. It's uh, all, I mean, almost an immortal game. Uh, playing a game like this against uh, the, the world number three in a line that he is known to be an expert in. I mean, this was, like I said, very cheeky from Bronstein. And I did show you that game where Spassky crushed Bronstein in that King's Gambit. So I wanted to show a nice game where Bronstein delivers a brilliancy against the world uh, number three. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, as usual, thanks to everyone who continues contributing to my channel in uh, any way whatsoever. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.